a really important thing to add on our bikes. And yeah. I wish somebody would mention it on an internet forum somewhere. Yeah, some sort of website or something. I wish somebody would talk about it. On a yeah, that would be good. All right, everybody, here we are at the 2021 Summer Field Test Enduro Bike Roundtable, and that means that I have to give these guys a whole bunch of hard questions. We're gonna talk about the stuff that we didn't like, and of course, we're gonna talk about the stuff that we did like. The five Enduro Bikes we've got here on test are We Are One's new arrival. That's a 152 millimeter travel bike that looks gorgeous, uses a new dual link design. We also have Transition's new Spire. That's the slackest, lowest bike of the bunch with 170 millimeters of travel. Also with 170 millimeters of travel is Norco's all new range with a high pivot and an idler pulley. That brings us to the GT Force, 160 mils of travel. It also has a high pivot with an idler. And of course, we've got YT's new Capra. And also, because you guys asked for it in the comments and for once we actually listened, we brought a 2019 Specialized Enduro that we're gonna compare all those bikes to. Now that Enduro won a field test back in 2019 and we all really liked it. So it'll be interesting to see how these all new bikes compare. Guys, my first question, we're here testing Enduro bikes. Enduro is a type of racing. That means we gotta talk about racing. Henry, if you go racing tomorrow, yeah. which bike are you choosing? It would be between the Norco and the Transition. Okay. But completely I'm, different designs. Completely different designs. Different ways to do the same thing, similar things. Basically, a bike that's really easy to ride, that's long, it's low. Mm -hmm. And for me, the Transition edges it. I just really? felt at home right away. And it's a very confidence inspiring bike. And I think that for a lot of riders is often one of the deciding factors. Yeah. Something that you mentioned a handful of times during the past couple of weeks is how sort of versatile that Spire manages to be while still offering some pretty impressive downhill performance. So I guess my question would be, obviously the Norco is a monster on the downs, but is the reason that you picked the transition is because it's just more well-rounded? That's not, that's not a bad way to, to think about it. I think it is more well-rounded. If I'm doing an EWS race, yeah. it's gonna be pedaling. I'd like to have something that they're big I, days. Big days, yeah. I don't think the transition really has a blind spot in some of the way that some of the other bikes do. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the Norco and the GT are heavy. Yeah. You know? The YT Capra didn't give me the suspension feel that I like. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the I mean very sort of efficient, racy feeling of the shorter travel we are one, yeah. which is really gonna suit some people. But for me, like I said, I don't feel like the transition has that blind spot. Yeah, fair enough. Matt? As an actual enduro racer, which bike are you going to choose? And remember, I'm not going to let you say, well, it depends on the course, this and that. This okay. is your enduro race bike for the season. And that includes races that are fast and smooth, races that are rough and steep. Remember, you can also pick the specialized enduro that's a few years old now. So what are you choosing? Okay. Um, you know what? For an all encompassing bike, the Geo is not outdated on the 2019 Enduro. It has really good suspension feel. Mm -hmm. It's lightweight. There's no crazy long rear end or long front center, super slack. It kind of does everything well. I think I would have to go with that one. Over all the new bikes. Yeah, they they just have, you know, their little corners where they do everything pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but for one encompassing bike, the Enduro would be it. The transition gets a little bit close, but it did have uh, that small bump compliance issue that I had with the Capra as well. Wasn't quite as bad as that. And if it was my own bike, maybe I'd try a coil shock or something. I know we aren't gonna do any changes, mm -hmm. but yeah, if we had to pick one bone stock bike, it would probably be the Enduro then. All right, Matt, over the five bikes that we have, just thinking about rear suspension, which design impressed you the most with how it performed out on the trail? Ooh, this was a pretty close toss up because the We Are One in its 152 mil travel against these other bigger bikes was really, really good. But the Norco was just incredible. Yeah. It's a high pivot, but it's the virtual high pivot. 
So it does a couple other different things that I mentioned before that single high pivots can't do. Mm -hmm. What are those? Well, one would be the independent braking force. Mm -hmm. So it isolates that totally. And then the shock rate's tuned a little bit different compared to a regular single pivot, which is kind of solidified there. All right, okay. Henry, there were some things you moaned about on the suspension front. Yeah. They were all fair. The, the capper <laughs> was a bit rough for yeah. sure. Uh, some of the bikes felt a bit deep. Which bike had the most impressive rear suspension and back it up with some facts. The most impressive rear suspension on mm -hmm. test was the performance they eat out of 152 mil travel on right. the one It's very, very good. I would love to see that in a 170 mil package. Like I know I'm cherry picking attributes and I know that's not necessarily <laughs> what you want. Yeah. Just imagine a world, you know, yeah. with the we are one rear suspension on the geometry and travel of the transition. Yeah. Holy smokes, it would be yeah. absolutely fantastic. Let's narrow it down to which of these enduro bikes would be best for someone who just wants to ride it every day. Then maybe they're not racing, but they want a big travel slack bike. Maybe they're sending it all the time, um, but they're not going to race. Matt, what would you recommend? I think one of the more well-rounded bikes in the long travel category would be the transition, like Henry mentioned. Yeah, it's light enough to do everything. It's got you know, a lengthy chainstay, but not overly long. It doesn't grow like some of the high pivot bikes. So it's still gonna be playful. It's got that aggressive head tube angle, even in the high setting. So yeah, nice steep seat angle as well there. Mm -hmm. Henry, earlier you said that you would just ride the Norco everywhere with your full face and your knee pads around your ankles. Is that still true? Did I say that? No, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Which bike would you choose though for riding everywhere? Uh, the transition. Yeah. I'm, this is going to be really boring for a lot of people. Most of my answers will be the transition. It's a fantastic bike. It's so versatile because it manages to combine progressive geometry, a good suspension feel. And I know the We Are One, I think, is is kind of more, um, it's kind of like a more of a high performance feel. Mm -hmm. I think it manages to do a great variety of things. What the transition manages to do, for me at least, and I know we were not quite on the same page, it's one of the the few things we didn't agree on, mm -hmm. was the transition enabled a suspension system that I think a lot of people are gonna get on and really, really enjoy riding. It just works. It works, inspires confidence. And I don't, like I said, I don't really see where the blind spot is. Yeah. I think um, the transition, it's long, but it's not outrageously slow. Yeah. It's got the 78 degree seat chip angle. So the on climbs, even on tight switchbacks. Yeah, that hides so much of that length. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go to the bike park now. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be spending your entire summer here at Sun Peaks, riding all the trails, all the jump lines. This place is fast as hell. Mm -hmm. Matt? I'm gonna go with the Norco. I'm gonna ride more of the downhill tracks, but I'm still yeah. gonna pedal, do this really cool Alpine loop up top. I'm not gonna get any comms on it, but the C-tube angle in Norco is gonna get me there. And the chainstay doesn't have that crazy kicking feeling that some of the other high pivots do. and it can handle the jumps really nicely too. Okay, all, all right. right. Henry? I mean, I I agree in some ways. I think the Norco is a great bike and a great rounder bike for somebody who has more of an emphasis on descending. It's so big. It is so big, but 2021 world, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think for bike park though, the one that for wide, fast trails with brake and chatter and yeah. all that involves, that GT is really something special. Even though? Even. It's got a bit less travel than the Norco. Yeah. It has an air shock, the Norco's yeah. coil. You would still pick that GT. Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of people, yeah. What about the long seat tube? The long seat, yeah, I mean, that could be an issue for some people. For me, yeah, it wasn't an issue. The actual, you know, on the actual riding on the descent, it tracks superbly. Okay. You know, and for me, when I'm going through braking bumps at God knows how fast, on yeah. a bike that tracks really well. Yeah. That's not to say the Norco didn't. And I think you stuck on something really interesting there because you might ride a bike park and it has got some of that kind of old school downhill tech. The Norco for that, it's a really great bike. But we're talking about someone that wants to just, you know, do big hucks, you know, really fast, flat out wide trails. The GT is fantastic. Okay. I've got a question for both of you guys, since we're on the, the subject of big bikes, which one of these bikes, I know they're not downhill bikes, but which one of these bikes comes the closest to being a downhill bike? I guess what my question is, which one is most capable on the descents? Okay, well, we've seen two of these bikes in downhill form, right? Dual Crown Forks, both raced at World Cups by World Cup teams, and that was the GT and the Norco. Mm -hmm. Between those two, yeah, the seat tube is a little bit of an issue for me uh, on the GT, so I would probably choose the Norco. 
I also think the suspension was just a little bit better as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably fall down on the side of the Norco as well. For me, it'd be between the transition and the Norco. Mm -hmm. And I think that if pedaling was taken out of the equation, you know, I mean, the Norco is a bike that could happily take a 40. You could have put it on for three months a year and then take it off for the rest of the time, should you want to really throw money at it, of course. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I think the transition is a very good bike, but actually a lot of the traits that make it so good at pedaling, you know, for instance, I don't actually want my downhill bike to be crazy light. I want something that's quite planted and things like a coil shock, they all begin to make a lot of sense. Yeah, for sure. What bike surprised you in a good way, Matt? That's definitely gonna be the We Are One. Yeah, we're here at Sun Peaks Bike Park with some of the fastest downhill terrain around. Yeah, there's really steep gnarly stuff here and that bike can hold its own against these bigger ones. That suspension is just very efficient for 152 mils of travel. Super snappy in the tight stuff as well. So yeah, it goes really good out here. Henry? Pleasant surprises. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised, to be fair, by both the Norco and GT. Once they flipped that switch, the geometry rescued them and they were great peddlers. A lot better than I thought they were gonna be. Yes, you gotta make your peace with the weight. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was an idler which will upset Levy beyond all doubt, but that's only a bonus. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the thought of, yeah, me and you rocking up for a ride and you having to listen to my idler, <laughs> fantastic, make them louder. I might put a turbo smoking. Sure. But I think they, those did surprise me pleasantly, but hand on heart would have to be the pound for pound performance the We Are One gets out of that 152 mil of travel is remarkable. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's be negative for a minute. I want to know what surprised you in a bad way. Is there is there anything that lets you down with these test bikes? There were two bikes that had FSR style horse link suspension, and I thought they were going to be a little bit more compliant on small bump, and that mm -hmm. was the YT and the transition. Uh, they had two different shocks, both air shocks, but yeah, I just played with the, the air pressure and I still couldn't get that sweet spot where it was nice and supple and then didn't blow through to the mid stroke. Mm -hmm. And yeah, unfortunately they just always chattered over like really easy groomed surfaces. Yeah, it wasn't when it was in the bigger chunk, they, they seemed to work and, and push through there. But even on our test track, it was a bit more fatiguing on those bikes. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Henry, bad things? Yeah, the only bike that I would struggle to say nice things about. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like, feels a bit like parents' evening. Like when you yeah. got that little toe rag and the teacher's got to be like, oh, oh my God, got to say something. Many memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I just didn't get on with the YT. Yeah. At all. You got to buy a bike today. Mm -hmm. It can only be one of our five test bikes. If you want to buy the expensive We Are One, you have the money. If you want to save money, get the GT, you can do that too. Which of these bikes would you buy today? Personally, I would choose the Norco. I'm not racing anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have no problem chilling out, going up the hill a little bit slower. Some of my friends are pretty competitive on the way up though. So I might have, I might fall a little bit behind on that, but I'm gonna smoke them on the downhills because this thing just eats. Yeah, and that's the reason why you would choose it. Yeah, yeah, that's the main priority for me is having fun on the way downhill and also being in control, getting lots of traction. Being in control, I should try that sometime. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it just hugs the ground, but it's also lively enough that uh, you can set up the suspension that it, it pulls to for big jumps and gaps. All right, Henry, you've got a bit of money. Yeah. You gotta buy one of these five bikes. Yeah. Which one are you gonna purchase and why? You know what I'm gonna say. I do know and I'm already <sighs> there's, bored. There's one bike I just wanna put on some Spandau Ballet in front of an open file on a shag pile rug and just make some sweet sweet A music. shag pile rug? And that is- What bike park are we at? <laughs> I don't know any bike park that does that. <laughs> well, you know, you know, pull some strings. Okay, all right. <laughs> the transition, it's just such a well-rounded bike. And 6,000 bucks, you get a solid spec that competes with any of these. Yeah. I think it's just a great bike. How, what would you go for? I mean, honestly, that We Are One sounds like it probably suits my style of riding a little bit more. I like something with a little bit of energy and life to the pedals. Um, and I mean, the thing is still super capable on the downs. And I really like the story behind the bike. I mean, the thing was made just down the road over there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and did you look at it? I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, they so. built this thing in two years from like starting the design, the whole design process took two years. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to use the climb switch very often. Oh, perfect. Okay, that is our round table for the 2021 Summerfield test and our five enduro bikes. 
Make sure to stay tuned for more videos from the field test and subscribe so you don't miss any of them.